Today, we're diving into the dark, claustrophobic depths of space for a terrifying encounter with one of the most iconic monsters in cinematic history. It's time to face the alien threat head on. Join me as I dissect Ridley Scott's classic sci-fi horror movie, Alien. From the iconic chestburster scene to Sigourney Weaver's unforgettable performances, Ellen Ripley. We'll explore the film's themes, characters, and enduring impact. So grab your flamethrower and buckle up because it's time to face the alien on this episode of Ringside Review. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. The Alien franchise has gone through several changes over the years, from being straight horror to focusing heavily on the action. I'm not saying that one is necessarily better than the other. I think if you prefer the horror side of it, that's fine. And if you prefer the action side of it, that's fine too. But personally, I do prefer the horror side. I love the atmosphere and tension that just builds throughout this film. Released in 1979 and directed by Ridley Scott, the film follows the crew of commercial spaceship the Nostromo, as they encounter a deadly alien life form while investigating an unknown signal. The concept for Alien originated with screenwriter Dan O'Bannon, who had been inspired by the surreal horror films of the 1970s. O'Bannon envisioned a story about a crew of ordinary people thrown into a terrifying situation, and he developed the alien itself to be a truly terrifying and unpredictable force of nature. Ridley Scott, who was just a rising director with a background in commercials and television at the time, was brought on board to helm the project. Scott's artistic vision and his ability to create a visually stunning and immersive world were crucial to the film's success. He collaborated with production designer H.R. Geiger, whose biomechanical and grotesque aesthetic perfectly captured the alien's menacing nature. For the longest time, I resisted this movie. Sci-fi horror isn't typically my favorite thing, but once I finally gave in and watched the movie and truly opened my mind to it, I, I absolutely loved it. But with all that being said, it is just about bell time now, so grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring for the plot. The commercial spaceship Nostromo is on its way back to Earth, carrying a seven-member crew in stasis. You have Captain Dallas, Executive Officer Kane, Warrant Officer Ripley, Navigator Lambert, Science Officer Ash, and Engineers Parker and Brett. The ship's computer, Mother, detects a transmission from a nearby planet and brings the crew out of stasis. Following company protocol to investigate signals potentially indicating intelligent life, they land on the planet. Dallas, Kane, and Lambert set out to explore and discover that the transmission originates from a derelict alien ship. Inside, they come across the remains of a large alien with a hole in its chest. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart-pounding, chill-inducing five-star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. Later, Mother decodes part of the transmission, which Ripley identifies as a warning. Kane stumbles upon a chamber filled with hundreds of large eggs. When he touches one, a creature springs out, breaks through his helmet, and latches onto his face. And this is the first time that we actually see a face hugger. <laughs> Dallas and Lambert quickly bring the unconscious Kane back to the Nostromo. Acting as the senior officer, Ripley refuses to let them aboard due to quarantine protocols, but Ash overrides her decision. While Parker and Brett work on repairing the ship, Ash tries to remove the creature from Kane's face, but stops when he realizes its acidic blood could harm Kane and eat through the ship's hull. That crap's gonna eat through the hull. Eventually, the creature detaches on its own and dies. Once back in space, Kane wakes up with some memory loss, but overall appears fine. However, during the crew's final meal before returning to stasis, he suddenly begins choking and convulsing. A small alien bursts from his chest, killing him instantly before disappearing into the ship. And this terrifying but damn cool thing is a chest burster. Ah! Oh 
God, the special effects in this movie are spectacular. I'm talking, they look AJ Styles level of phenomenal. Get ready to fly. After ejecting Kane's body into space, the crew sets out to track down and kill the creature using tracking devices. Brett goes after the ship's cat, Jones, in a landing leg compartment where the now fully grown alien ambushes and kills him. The crew then realizes that the alien is hiding in the air ducts. Things start feeling even more claustrophobic at this point. Dallas enters the ducts with a flamethrower, planning to drive the creature into an airlock, but it attacks him. Later, Parker finds only Dallas's flamethrower. Lambert suggests escaping in the shuttle, but Ripley, now in command, points out that it can't support all four of them. She insists on continuing Dallas's plan to flush the alien out. While trying to reach Mother, Ripley finds out the crew was woken up and sent to the planet because the Wayland yutani Company secretly ordered Ash to return with the alien for study. They didn't care about the crew's safety, and they considered them all expendable. She confronts Ash, who actually tries to kill her, but Parker steps in, knocking Ash's head off, revealing that he's an android. The survivors turn Ash's head back on, and he confirms the company's orders. He says that the alien is unkillable and even brags about how cool it is, laughing at their chances of surviving. I admire its purity. A survivor. Ripley shuts him down and Parker burns him into ashes. The remaining crew then decides to blow up the Nostromo and escape in the shuttle. But while getting ready, Parker and Lambert are killed by the alien. <laughs> Ripley, now the only one left, starts the self-destruct, but the alien stops her from getting to the shuttle. She goes back and tries to stop the explosion, but it's just too late. But she finally does make it back to the shuttle with Jones the cat and barely escapes as the Nostromo self-destructs. As Ripley prepares for stasis, she realizes the alien has hidden itself in a narrow compartment. Acting quickly, she puts on a spacesuit and flushes the creature out. It starts to approach her, but before it can strike, Ripley opens the airlock. The sudden decompression nearly sucks the alien into space, but it does cling desperately to the doorframe. Ripley then fires a grappling hook, forcing the alien out and ignites the engines, blasting it into the void of space. After recording her final log entry, Ripley places both herself and Jones into stasis for the journey back to Earth. And that's where the story ends. The universe has been saved from these aliens known as xenomorphs forever, right? Well, not even close, but that's a different video for a different day. But I will say this, this franchise has something for everybody. Whether you want horror, action, even a little goofiness, there's sure to be something here for you to latch on to, pun intended. But for now, let's keep our focus on the original the first glimpse at these creatures and the terror that they can cause. And that means it's time to look at the positives and negatives of Ridley Scott's Aliens. So I say we open up this airlock and just get right to it. The film's setting, a derelict spaceship, creates a sense of isolation and vulnerability. The tight corridors and confined spaces heighten that tension as the crew realizes they're not alone. Director Ridley Scott masterfully builds suspense through the subtle sound design, eerie lighting, and slow burn pacing. The anticipation of the alien's appearance is palpable, making the eventual confrontation even more terrifying. This atmosphere and tension is just one of the puzzle pieces that fit together to make this film so effectively scary. The Xenomorph Alien, designed by Swiss artist H.R. Geiger, is a masterpiece of biomechanical horror. Its grotesque appearance, phallic symbolism, and predatory nature have made it one of the most iconic monsters in not only horror history, but cinema history as well. The alien's ability to blend into its surroundings and its relentless pursuit of its prey create a constant sense of dread. Its sudden attacks and unpredictable behavior make it a truly terrifying foe to me. 
Not to mention the fact that it's extremely shrouded in mystery. The film also features really good performances from the entire cast. Sigourney Weaver's portrayal of Ellen Ripley, the lone survivor of the crew, is a tour de force. She delivers a powerful performance demonstrating courage, resourcefulness, and a maternal instinct that sets her apart from a lot of other protagonists. Tom Skerritt, John Hurt, Harry Dean Stanton, Yafit Kodo, Ian Holm, and Veronica Cartwright provide solid performances as, as the crew members who fall victim to the alien. Their fear, desperation, and eventual demise add to the film's overall sense of hopelessness. And we can't forget the, in my mind at least, groundbreaking special effects. Alien relies heavily on practical effects such as animatronics and even a little bit of stop motion to create the alien and its environment. These techniques allowed for a more tangible and realistic portrayal of the creature. And you already know that I really appreciate things like that. The film's visual style with its dark, gritty aesthetic complements the claustrophobic setting and creates a sense of realism. The use of shadows, lighting, and camera angles all work to enhance all of these things that I've mentioned. But now let's take a look at some things that maybe I don't like as much about the movie. Look, I really don't have much to say in the negative department about this movie, but I do find the pacing a bit slow. I think that there are some moments that just drag on a bit too long. and that's even more apparent in the extended version of the film, which adds an additional 17 minutes of footage. It's not something that's going to ruin the movie by any means, but it is a small gripe that I have. I also find some of the dialogue a bit clunky. Some of it just feels like forced exposition. Again, just a small gripe, but nonetheless, it does bother me. And honestly, that's about it. If there's something that you don't like about this movie, go ahead and let me know in the comments because maybe I'm just forgetting something. But that is going to do it for this episode of Ringside Review. Put all of your thoughts about Alien in the comments below. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I have a discount code that you can use to save 20% off your entire order, so be sure to check that out. You can find all of my merchandise available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash AndrewDreamer. And also, down below here, we do have products listed below the channel now, so check those out. And I've been reworking the WWH Patreon page, and I've been updating some things on there, and be sure to check out the new memberships that we have available here on YouTube as well. Check all of those out. All of the links are in the description below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. Now that we've talked about Alien, how about checking out another creature feature like Tremors? Luckily, you can do that by watching the video that's appearing on your screen now. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.